Hello, my name is Refulgent, and I'm doing a let's play of Ashley Emptiness Inside. Please like and subscribe, it would help out a lot. Thank you, and I'm just gonna get right to it and start the video. Okay, new game. Let's do this. My parents and I recently moved to a new city. And every night I have the same dream. A wonderful dream about a cozy restaurant with a kind owner and pleasant visitors. So beautiful that I didn't even want to wake up for the last days. But this morning I heard voices. The voices of the people I saw in my dreams. Voices full of pain and suffering. They filled me like an echo in my head. Especially one ringing voice. A little girl's voice. This voice was calling me desperately. Ashley, 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 Ashley. He called me to a place that didn't exist. To a restaurant from my dreams. We need you and you need us. Save us and let us save you. I close my eyes and the voices pull me back to my dream. I'm just gonna take like a minute to talk about what I just read. So for the recurring dreams, I guess that could mean she has some kind of like uh, trauma in her past that she's trying to deal with. If uh, the same dream repeats, and the trauma that she could have possibly went through is something a dramatic happened to her, like a death in the family. She could have lost like a friend or somebody uh, poured into her. She could have some kind of like a serious illness of some sort. Maybe her parents moving to a new city caused some kind of dramatic experience for her. Her parents uh, relocating made her start having these dreams. She could have witnessed something dramatic like somebody dying in front of her. She could have been a rape victim, could have been abused or something about that. And so for some reason, she is having a dream about this place. She dreamt about, I dreamed about a cozy restaurant with a kind owner and pleasant visitors. So there's nothing really scary about this dream that she's having. Nothing out of the ordinary. She's just having a recurring dream at a place at some restaurant and she she apparently loves this place she thinks it's uh beautiful she doesn't want to wake up from this dream she doesn't want to get up she just so I don't know if she has anybody really important in her life. She doesn't want to wake up from a dream and she's just like, she likes dreaming instead of doing anything in her like personal life. But today she starts hearing some kind of voices of some sort when she is awake. And uh, this is a elusive dream. Basically, you can, you can dream while you're wide awake. And a lucid dreams can cause you to hear voices it sounds while you're fully conscious and so you could uh she could be possibly dreaming while she's awake the other reason why she could be somehow hearing voices while she's awake she could be hallucinating hearing things she could be ill of some sort without being a lucid dream so she just could be going a little psychotic possibly but voices of the people that she saw in her dream. So it's it's probably just a lucid dream. And then she hears a voice of pain and suffering in her dream. I don't know what happened to these people. They probably, these people could be some kind of like spirits that are trying to somehow, these people are trying to contact this woman calling for help. Filled me like an echo in my head, especially one ringing voice, a little girl's voice. So she, 
one of these voices stand out to her. It's a little girl's voice. She she is desperately calling her repeatedly for help. I don't know if this girl can be saved. Possibly, I don't know. She is constantly being tormented, and she is calling her for help. Then he he called me to a place that didn't exist. So this place might have never existed, or this place no longer exists. Uh, enough of my blabbing. I'm gonna get to the video. Okay. Alright, hopefully I'm not giving you guys any uh, motion sickness. Sorry about that. Um, so, okay. I'm dreaming right now and shift to run. Oh, yeah. I'm going fast as fuck. Alright, cool. Hmm. Okay, I need to find a key. What the f is this thing? Alright. Well, damn. Um, okay. Got a, got a letter. Alright. Newspaper 1. On the chilly fall evening, the new restaurant has opened its doors and gathered a lot of people on Martin Street. Standing under a flamboyant sign, the founder of the new business, William Barnett, welcomed the first guest in the press. The district of authorities also did not ignore this event, having accordingly congratulated the young entrepreneur. The mayor of the city decided to remain the townspeople that evening during the holiday. One should not forget about the safety rules so as not to darken the rare sunny days in such difficult times. We were not able to speak per personally with the staff of agencies who supervising the district. We all understand that they do not even have a free minute and we must provide them with all kinds of support. We saw with our own eyes how these brave guys throughout the evening ensured the protection of our citizens and the security check of our new establishments. We are glad that a new business place has appeared in our city, a place where you can relax after a hard day at work and forget for a moment about the disasters that have been following us. Okay. Did I? This game is. F okay. Continue. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? Oh. Okay. Paper. Okay. Um... Alright. Kath Catherine's message one. Dear Ashley, my name is Catherine. I call you here because I need your help. This place will seem familiar to you. Unlike me, you have been here in reality, albeit a long time ago, in your childhood. You found this place calm and safe, but it has long ceased to be so. Now it looks more like a delusion. Each victim began to see it in a dream, just like you, as well as me. And with new victims, the dream becomes more real. Every victim comes here sooner or later anyways. 
usually weakened and almost dead, but my strength has enough to call you ahead of time and open the door for you. You will remain here alone with this place, but now you choose to be a victim or not. There is no turning back. You are part of this place and you must go on, and I will try to help you. If successful, you can set us free. Fragile as the logic of dreams, this camera will help you on your way. With it, you will be able to see hidden signs. The restaurant will resist your arrival. It is full of dark magic seals that blocks the passage or hide something from you. With the camera help, you can find the keys and activate it by photographing. Good luck. Got the camera. Heck yeah. Let me, let me pick that camera up. Oh yeah. So Catherine opened up a portal so I can help her. Fucking bitch. I'm gonna help Catherine shove this flashlight up her ass. I feel like Catherine should have notified me before she shot a portal at her ass. God damn it, Catherine. I grabbed everything. Wow. 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 Huh. Well, damn, Stark. Hello? Hello? Is, it, is anybody there? Yes! Oh my god. I wonder if I... I should probably check if I'm able to interact with anything over here. I don't think, uh, I don't think anything's over here. Oh, I need to find find the key. Okay. Hey guys, do you ever lose something and you try to find it and you look all over the house and then you find it and it was in your pocket the whole entire time in a really obvious spot? It happens sometimes to me. Usually I leave it in an obvious spot and I don't even bother looking there. Everybody has those days where they're just like completely discapopulated. Because sometimes I'm just like sleep deprived and I just like stay up all night playing video games and like f it, I'll just go to work or school, or whatever, completely drowsy. I don't care. One way trip all day long. There is only water surface around me, boring and empty as a reflection of my new reality. Time stretched out as if the ocean did not want to let us go. The ocean that divided my life into a past that did not exist and the future that will not come. The city approached slowly as if it were a mirage and seemed that there would be nothing more, only unattainable mirage before the eyes, an endlessly empty world around for eternity. After the first steps on uncharted land, the port was surprisingly quiet. The morning fog hid the world around, making it unsteady and unreal. We walked forward. The spot ahead was slowly taking on the shape of a car. The gloomy driver greeted us with a slight nod. It looked like a gray eyes were composed of the same cold, thick fog that swirled around us. We drove smoothly past the identical gray houses. The monotony of the view outside, the window tired me and I closed my eyes.
Found the key. All right, let's go open that door. Let's do this. All right. Oh, yeah. Another letter. William Starry. All right. I've been feeling strange lately, constant fatigue, irritation, and worse of all, memory loss. So I start keeping a diary to keep track of my condition. This is probably a consequence of stress, perhaps. I work too much. I will be glad if it passes soon. I just want to receive my restaurant. Fortunately, I still have a chance to do it. Recently, I received an interesting letter in an organization unknown to me earlier offered me help of course for a fair fee that same evening a courier brought me a package from them them there were their advertising brochures which recommendations and a few gifts among these items were silver triangle boxes or caskets I'm not sure I understand the purpose of these. A set of crayons similar to those used by agents in small table mirrors. All these things made my office beautifully decorated. I looked at their brochures and documents, but did not understand much of their recommendations. In the letter, they promise that a person come to me. I hope he will help me with this. Huh. Shut the f*** up! Uh, so objectives, find exit, uh, find part one, find part two, and find part three. Oh, f*** it. Alright. Um... The phone supports internal calls for ease of memorization. Internal numbers correspond to words indicating departments of premises or people. Five out of five, Catherine's Diary, page two. Finally, we drove up to the house. He seemed newer than the others on the same street. During the day, I explored the new apartment without much interest. It was larger than the old one, but because the rooms and corridors were narrow and elongated, the apartment seemed cramped. In the evening, I lay down on the bed and closed my eyes. I wanted to be anywhere in any other place that would be as different as possible from this. I imagined a cozy, spacious room. There was a beautiful interior, pleasant music sound, bright picture hung. I imagined walking slowly along the wall and looked at them. They were dark, but attractive. Some seemed very old, while others were covered with fresh, not yet dried paint. The image on them froze under the gaze, but it was necessary to slightly avert the eyes, and the picture came to life. At first, I thought that it seemed to me, because when I looked at them again, they stopped. 
their movement, but I felt, had a feeling that every time something in the image was changing, then someone slammed the door, the beautiful painting instantly melted into my consciousness, leaving me alone in the cramped room. I really wanted to see them again, but this dream seemed to avoid me. Huh. Um. Telephone, wardrobe, restroom, and exit. <laughs> Alright. Um. Oh, uh, what the f? Okay. This has to be a clue of some sort. Pretty sure... A note. So, Ashley must be the phone number. It's two... Seven... Alright, let's do this. Yeah. All right. Oh, what the hell? Work it. That's a shot. That's a shot. Looking good, girl. Damn. Oh, yeah. Show that skin. Damn, girl. Mm, weird. This is a part, second part. Um, what is it? Oh, no leather. Beautiful. Beautiful. Dear William Barnett, I congratulate you on your success and wish your business prosperity. I represent an organization that specializes in work with people. We support many food services and entertainment businesses that are dedicated to improving the people's lives during these dark times. I'm confident that we can consolidate and multiply your success. I am attaching a business car card to this letter. Huh. Okay. I need to find a key for this door. Awesome. Oh, Jesus. Well, damn. That was easy. That was... That was the f***.
<coughs> First part. Let's do it. Damn, I'm surprised I haven't noticed yet. So the last suit that we need is spades. At night, I had a wonderful dream. Once again, I found myself in that very cozy, spacious place, which turned out to be rather unusual restaurants. But this time, I was not alone. The place seemed to come to life. Tables appeared with pleasant strangers. The friendly waitress served food and drinks. The atmosphere of the holiday reigned around. Everyone was smiling and having fun. Suddenly, some guys sat down with me. They treated me with delicious dessert and we talked about different topics for ages. I told them about my journey, my life before it in my family. Usually I really share my thoughts and feelings with someone, but with these guys, it was easier for me than ever, never before. Morning came, but thanks to the wonderful sleep, I felt great. I wanted to keep this feeling Grabbing my bag, I took out a few sheets of paper and pencils all morning before breakfast and even after I drew what I saw in my dream. It seemed strange to me that I remember every detail I saw in a dream, although the memories of a recent trip on the ship were somehow blurry. Oh my god. Diary, page two. Today I remember that meeting those guys just real benefactors and their member really come to me. I met him in my office. He introduced himself as Matt Young, energetic dressed in an expensive suit. He seemed vaguely familiar to me, but what impressed me the most was his sharp gaze, green eyes with a spark inside that seemed to cut through space. Matt looked like the agents patrolling the city, but unlike any agent, he smiled and looked refreshed and energized. We talked all evening discussing problems. Matt talked about his success of his organization, interesting challenges, and about himself. In the past, he, like many other organizations, was an agent, but then they found the best use of his experience still wanting to help people. When the work day was over, I dedicated my staff and my guests, and I examined the restaurant. Matt assessed the other agent's defense with a smile, eternally phrasing and criticizing them. After the inspection, we said goodbye, agreed to meet tomorrow. He wanted to analyze information received and draw up a plan for our future actions. Well, holy shit. Do 
boy just went went missing, missing, huh? Uh. Oh, Oh, it's right here. changing on me. Yo, who did that? Hey, better answer me. Who the f*** did that? The power of feminism. I will f*** you up. I'm honestly kind of surprised I was the first jump scare that popped up in the game so far. This is kind of off topic, but hopefully you guys are staying safe during COVID. Hopefully you guys are staying inside, just taking it easy, playing some video games, uh, watching some Netflix and uh, watching YouTube. Hopefully uh, none of you guys got ill during COVID, but uh, if you if you did, hopefully you guys are okay. Got the last, last piece. piece. Let's, Let's do, do this. this. Um. Cold. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it's about to go down in that basement. Catherine's Diary, page four. Every night I dream about the same restaurant. A week later, I felt like I knew all the visitors, even the stuff. And they were all interesting people, and they were all interested in me. They asked a lot about my life, my family, my friends, and they always listened carefully. Every night, they supported me, calmed me down, and gave me advice. A social and witty bartender who prepares completely unique cocktails. A good-natured chef who tries to make even the most ordinary dish special, smiling waitresses uh, delivering orders so quickly that they seem like the wind and 
of course, the owner of the restaurant, he often comes down to us from the, his office upstairs, always dressed in a business suit. He, like everyone else, smiled kindly and gave the impression of sensitive and attentive person. They all became close friends to me. It's kind of weird that Ashley and Catherine are having the same dream about this restaurant that seems to be perfect in every way. I'm pretty excited to figure out wh what the cause of uh, these dreams that everybody else is having. I bet it's going to turn pretty dark pretty soon. Well, this is weird. They have a puzzle of hieroglyphics. All right. That evening, the sky above Morton Street lit up with a blinding light. A dozen of eyewitnesses witnesses told about the millimeter tongues of flames above the building, not far from the northern square. Five brothers and rescuers arrived at the scene within a few minutes, but by this time, the fire was blazing throughout the building. Initially, the flames engulfed the roof, but quickly spread over the wooden floors to the other floors of the same building. The fire was assigned an increased difficult grade. It destroyed everything in its path. But the most striking thing is that there was an anonymous silence inside the burning building. No screams were heard. No people were seen running out. We still remember the day the restaurant opened on that gloomy autumn evening when Burnett seemed to burst the clouds, replacing our sadness with joy that he gave people all this year. The flames burned, the joy of this place took the lives of the staff and all the visitors. And today, on this winter night, I stand on Martin Street with the covered not only with snow, but also with ash. And I ask the emptiness, where is the justice? I just find it a little odd that all the visitors and the staff in the restaurant didn't make it out and nobody made the slightest sound. Everybody in the building was possibly unconscious before the fire started. All these people in this restaurant were probably murdered. Alright. Newspaper 2. We inform our readers after the well known incident, the district authorities tightened the rules for being on the streets and public places to establish and maintain order, as well to reduce the amount of victims. We, in turn, ask the people to absorb and introduce precautions in every possible way to cooperate with the agents keeping order. The Department of Homeland Security said the state should support businesses affected by the new measures. Each case will be considered individually with the involvement of supervising agency. Regardless of the circumstances, the owner, owners of the organizations are obliged to confirm the adjustments of their own work rules in accordance with the new regulations. Oh. 
Huh. Dear William Burnett, thank you for contacting us soon. Our representative will come to you and you will discuss with him the plan of our future cooperation and strengthening your success. Like many other organizations, you have suffered significant losses due to the measures introduced, but we accept your understanding to cooperation with remind you that the owners of our organizations are required to confirm the adjustments of the rules of work in accordance with your new standards. If you have any additional questions, please contact the supervising agency. Oh shit. Holy shit. Okay, buddy, you better back the up. You better not not get anywhere near me. You're in stiffing my hair. Yo, Biden, you better, you better cut it out with that weird shit, okay? Nobody, nobody wants you sniffing their hair, okay? So, uh, I don't know where you went, but you better come out. And then, uh, we got, we got to discuss this, uh, whole, whole issue, all right? This is, this gotta, I gotta put an end to this. All right, there you are. All right, Biden, I'm gonna teach you a lesson that you'll never forget, okay?
<laughs> well, guys, um, I need a. I'm gonna take a quick break because I just, uh, I just myself, but we're gonna beat this.